Let's have a gun debate. Oh boy. We have this story from the Daily Mail. Gun-wielding oh Texas God. man who shot dead his partner's ex-husband during furious child custody row will not be charged after shooting is ruled to be in self-defense. This is a very, very interesting story. So you can see here these two guys are getting at it. One guy's got a gun. I think it's a, it's a um, I can't remember what, what, which kind of gun it is, but it's a 9 millimeter uh, long gun of some sort. So uh, I'll just give you the quick rundown, and then we're going to have this debate because, you know, we were talking about a bit about, uh, a bit before the show. So this dude is told, you pick up your son from your ex-wife at 315. He shows up. His ex-wife says, no. He says, where is my son? Hmm. She says, I wanted to stay with him longer, so I'm not going to be giving him to you. And he says, you know, in fact, he basically is like, I'm here because the court says 315, he is mine. I come here at 315. And then he goes, I'm going to drag you all, you, and marie and so-and-so to court. Right when he says this, his ex-wife's boyfriend comes out with the gun and comes on the porch and tells him to get out. The dad gets up in his face, doesn't use his arms, and starts saying, oh, are you going to shoot me or something like that? The dude with the gun fires one into the ground. Then they, they tussle, spin around. The dad pushes the homeowner a few feet off his porch. And the homeowner, the, his wife's ex-boyfriend, or his wife's current boyfriend, his ex-wife's boyfriend, immediately raises the rifle and goes pop, pop, towards his own house, hmm. hitting the dad twice, killing him instantly. I believe it was instant. Now, uh, the, the court is saying he is not going to be charged with a crime. This one's tough. Because on the letter of the law, I'm torn on this one. Was he acting in self-defense? Did he have a right to shoot and kill this dad who was coming to get his son? There's two ways I look at it. The first is, if the court tells me, be here and get your son, you have to do it. It's custody. Like, you have no, you can't just ditch your kid. And I show up, and they're like, we're not giving the kid up or telling you where he is. Mm -hmm. And then the dude walks out with a gun. I'm going to be like, you've kidnapped my child, and now you're threatening me with a weapon. I'm here under a court order. Does that guy have a right to come out with a gun? On that alone, I'm like, No. And then not only not only did he shoot and kill the dad, he pointed he shot he shot and killed the dad towards his own house. Mm. That's one of the one of the, the rules of gun safety. Know what is beyond your target. He could have shot his own daughter because his daughter was filming on the inside. I couldn't really tell when we watched the video. Maybe we can watch it again. I don't know where you're planning on playing it. It's a, I don't know it's, if we can't play yeah, it's pretty it. Pretty brutal. It's a video of yeah. a dude dying. But the daughters are in the house filming out the window. Okay. When he aims at him and fires. His, I can't tell if he's pointed at the house or like it's pointed house. sideways it's, alongside the house. Well, the guy it's, it's was on the, the porch, so I'm pretty right. sure it was at the house. And then the other problem was that he shot into the ground to sort of escalate the situation. Yep. And that's another no-no. You don't fire warning shots, right? Like, because you don't know what's where you're pointing. I, I think they knew each other. The big dude was abusive and the little guy. Why was the big dude abusive? I just have, this is the feeling I'm getting from this. The big guy was notably abusive. That's why they weren't together. And the little guy, they knew each other and they hated each other. Or like clearly hate each That's other. That's the vibe sure. I was getting. Because he went right at his face when he came out with the gun. They got right in each other's face. So this is the problem I have with it. If the the assumption of uh, this guy's name is William Carruth, who, who shot and killed Chad Reed. If you're in your house and you hear fighting outside and you don't know what's going on, you have a right to keep in bare arms. It's your property. I agree. I, I might get my gun as well. People are screaming. I'll be like, I don't know what's going on, but there might be something bad happening. You walk out with your gun. Next thing you know, a guy gets up in your face and screaming at you. Your first reaction is to fire into the ground as like, you can call an escalation, but if you have the option to shoot the guy who just got up in your face. Maybe he just panicked and said, I, I think it's stupid to shoot in the ground, mind you. And then the guy grabs you. You both spin. He pushes you back. Now he separated you from your home. He could go in and harm your daughters. Hmm. So you say, nah, -uh. pop, pop. From that perspective, I'm like, I get it. We don't know what this guy knew. But the problem is, man, the, the, the Chad Reed guy was there legally to pick up his kid. And, and it didn't even get, there was not enough time for him to even call the cops. Apparently, his new wife was already calling the police about, about the argument when the, art, when the yelling happened. And all the dad said was, I'm taking you to court. Like, not yeah. even a threat of violence. And the dude walks out with a gun. That, that, this is the challenge here. Because... If this dude, William Carruth, knew why the dad was there, you know, and what was going on and came out with his gun, then I'd say charge him. But we can't assume he did know. And he can just be like, I had no idea. I heard yelling. And then it's like gun rights. 
If people are fighting on your property, you got a right to defend it. And like you said, and we don't know the history of, of these two guys. I mean, it's possible that they've gotten into it before. He knows that this guy could potentially come into the house and harm his own children or, or be looking for this kid. I mean, we really don't know the situation. I'm also sympathetic to the idea that if you're son is being withheld from you and you have a right to be with your son then parental instinct kind of kicks in and like people will do anything to save and help their children if they feel like their children are being parentally kidnapped so i understand that impulse at a certain point though you have to be smart enough to think if i get myself involved in this situation if i'm trying to grab this guy's gun whatever Am I better off trying to be the better person and retreat and potentially save my life and get the court or the police involved as opposed to trying to start this fight that you're not going to win because you don't also have a weapon? I mean, it's this is it's a difficult is, situation. I don't really know how like who is I mean, right here. I mean, maybe they both were wrong in different ways. So, but it's 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 tough because like, do you send a guy to jail because he pulled a gun out of his own property because a guy was yelling and then a guy got in his face? But then I'm also thinking about if the court orders someone to be there and you come out, like imagine if this guy was a cop who's instructed to be there by for law enforcement purposes and you walk out with your gun and the cop rushes you, I guess it's different. My issue is just like this dude is trying to get his child. And when the wife is saying no, and he's like, my kid's been kidnapped, a dude then comes out with a gun. And at that point, I'm sure the dad's like, you've kidnapped my child and are threatening me with a rifle, with a long gun. Like, yo, I'm surprised all he did was get in his face. Well, he also chest bumped him, which is aggravating. That's what I, I mean. I'm, surpri- I'm surprised that's all he did. And then he, gr- he touches the gun, too. He touches right, the hand fight. that's mm-hmm. on the gun, he which basically is that dual possession at this point, like the Ahmad Arbery case. You know, if you, if you put your hand on the weapon, not that's not, basically you're telling me you're going to yes, try and take it out of my hands. But not when they separate and the dude goes, pop, pop. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the challenge is... Do you really blame a dad for getting in the face of a guy who pulled up, who walked out with a gun when his son's missing? We got to talk about what's legal and what's right. That's the thing. Like yeah. morally, yep. I don't think that he was necessarily wrong, but legally, I don't know that even if somebody has your kid, if you're allowed to go into somebody else's home or try to grab that, like I don't know what the what the legal situation I think is. There. Definitely not. If right. someone ever comes out on their front porch with a rifle and tells you to get off their property, get off their property. Right. You go to the truck and you call yeah. the police. I mean, you're. You're yep. asking for a bad situation at this point, not to victim blame, but I think that's the best we can do, to be honest. Yeah, that he should have immediately backed up, backed away and said, I'm getting the cops and the cops would have come and he would have won the fight. Exactly. The cops would have been like, you yeah. are illegally withholding a child. You can't come out here with that weapon. Go back in your house. And guess Where's what? He would have probably gotten more custody of the kid yep. yeah. if he had let this play out because oh, yeah. the, they would have been accused of endangering the child as well. Yeah, that split second of the dad yeah. walking up to do with a gun. You see him snap when the guy comes out with the gun. He so just goes crazy. right in his face. Yeah. Like he wants to fight that guy. Man. Yeah, because if you're if his kid is it's his son. The man. way it's this like he doesn't even care about the so kid quickly. anymore. He just wants yeah. to hurt the guy. Well, this this was like almost inevitable to me, the way that these guys were so quick to go after each well, other. Well let's let's get to the dark part. The dark part is the mom has the kids living with the dude who killed their dad. That's nuts. And apparently, the kids were like, "This is your fault." This is mom. almost you like we're, these kids are probably going to hear this show someday, man. At this point, it's like, "I'm sorry, guys." I mean, I've, I'm apparently here. Apparently, the kids are like really upset, no as kidding. they should. Be. I got. I got to be honest. If it were me when I was a kid, I would have ran away. Yeah. No joke. I'm not gonna. I, I, there's no way I'd live with the dude who you know killed my dad. Well, right. now we. I don't know enough about the conversation because that guy might have been really abusive. But you said the kids. I mean, it's still their dad. No, they're apparently saying like it's your fault. You know, wow, it's a crazy story. This, this, this is America. It's so traumatic, and they're I aware mean, that Kyle is... Carruth shot and killed their father in front of their mother, stepbrother, and myself. <sighs> a judge not a, denied the petition for custody. So this is um, this is the the, uh, the the dead father's new wife. She was trying to get custody, and they were like, "No, you're not a blood relative." Hmm. So the kids have to live with the dude who killed their dad. There's so much with our. System, our custody system that is at fault here too because like that the default would be you have to go to a blood relative is obviously super problematic when you have family members that are not fit to raise children and i think it's really unfortunate that you can't assign to like a family friend or a distant relative or something like that in a situation like this where clearly these kids are living in a traumatic potentially abusive situation and yet 
you can't separate them for whatever reason. It's another reason why I think, uh, for example, like a lot of the impulse to always give child custody of the children or majority custody to the mother is not always the best policy either. So there's a lot that needs to be reformed in that system. Maybe if they had gotten this right from the beginning, this issue wouldn't have arisen to begin with. Man, I suppose the challenge is the moment that Chad Reed was on the porch with access to the house and Carruth was off the porch with no access to the house, that's where it becomes justification. Because now he's in between Carruth and his daughters. Yeah. yeah. Is, or, it, is it not justification if you're just actually, like, get off my property actually, and then the guy? I don't, I don't know if it was Carruth's daughters. It might have been Chad Reed's daughters. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, it might have been his kids. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I guess there's some context we'll need to, we need we would need to pull up. I, it, I think it I think it was his it might have been his kids in there. I'm not entirely sure. If it was um if it was Chad's daughters, then that would have made this guy with a gun more callous about pointing it toward the house. I think that actually kind of makes sense, which I would think would then be an argument for not ever leaving those kids in his custody ever. These poor kids, oh, I don't know where they end up. It's so sad. Yeah, I think the kids inside the house were Chad Reed's kids. Not right, Carus kids. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure though. That that's that's important. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but he was only there to pick up his son, so again, I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while. We covered this when this we talked about it when the story first first uh, broke. But uh, I wonder if people are pointing it out. No, I don't know. Well, you guys comment, you guys super chat, and then we'll get to it when we, when we talk about super chat, so we can you know maybe correct the record if we got if we if we mix something up. Crazy stuff, man. I'm curious. Yeah, this is a crazy philosophical conundrum. I got I gotta say. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.